So that's why uh, I think it was in '53 that uh, PBS, the public uh, broadcasting uh, station, uh, gave me an assignment because I talked about it a lot to write a one hour presentation, a one hour story on the life of Frederick Douglass. And there's a lot of material with this man. A lot of people have written about him and been inspired by him. But I think some of the finest things about the life of Douglas is what Douglas himself has written. He was a man, a very far-sighted man, who knew or suspected that we would be ascendant here one day, long after his death. He lived 78 years, born in about 1817, a slave in Maryland, and he died in 1895. So he covered almost the entirety of, of the 19th century, his life. And he touched on every significant issue that had to do with human life and the perpetuation of human life in good health. He was the first women's rights man at Seneca Falls in New York in 1848, I believe it was. There was the first women's suffrage meeting. There were many men present, but Douglas, Frederick Douglass was the only one who voted in favor of women's suffrage. Uh, Frederick Douglass became a conductor on the Underground Railroad, particularly in Rochester, New York, where he had become the editor of his own newspaper, The North Star. And against the advice of many friends who felt that he should just be a member of the abolitionist movement, speak as often as you like, but don't, don't become the editor of the newspaper, that's not important. There are already uh, uh, newspapers in existence. William Lloyd Garrison's The Liberator takes a magnificent stand relative to the importance of getting rid of slavery. Douglas insisted that it was important that the people themselves who were being oppressed speak for themselves. <laughs> and in so doing, speak loud and resonantly about the inhumanity of man against man. So these were aspects of the play that I put together for PBS. It was very warmly responded to by the press throughout the country. Uh, many people said it's high time somebody remembered Douglas. He had so much to tell us. I remember a great singer, actor, activist, athlete, Paul Robeson. Is that a name anybody knows here? Paul Robeson. Born 1898, died 1976, 77. I was never got a greater voice, nor, in my opinion, a greater mind. He made many films as an actor. He finally stopped making films in the United States because they were too, too racist. It was always characterized in such a way that he would not want young black people to see uh, him or any other black person in such a role. And he went to Europe, and was great success there. Uh, the first African-American actor to play six years as fellow, first in London in 1930, and then the first in the United States. They always had white actors portraying the fellow who was a Moor, a black, a black man. And in 1943, Paul Robeson was the first. And that play ran for some 296 or more performances, which is an all-time record for any Shakespeare play in the theater in the United States, particularly on Broadway. This is Paul Robeson, whom you want to read about, R-O-B-E-S-O-N, Robeson, Paul. You can find his books right here at the school, I'm sure. Spoke of Frederick Douglass as being our greatest teacher. 
Teaching us what? Teaching us about ourselves. About our potential. Teaching us that we have every reason in the world to love ourselves, to respect ourselves, and to make something of ourselves in this world. And to help liberate this country from its asinine, vile, racist policies toward not only black people, but Asian, others, and to the poor whites. Uh, Douglas was a man for all ages. And in short, that's the direction I've chosen to go to develop works on the lives of our ancestors, be they in our family or somebody else's family, who have made contributions to the growth and development of this country and other countries and our minds. And that is where I step in. If you have any questions you'd like to ask about anything? Would you like to take a nap? <laughs> yes. Whoever's got a question, stand up, Yes. Sit, just come on up here. <laughs> Is P. Herman living? P. Herman is a businessman, and he's decided that the character he created is going to make a lot of money for him, and it has. So I don't think he's moving either, although the character is Oh, what does he do? Anybody else with any rich questions to ask? Yes. To get what? Why are you going to stop that? All my life. I was always doing something, you know, in that area, singing, uh, uh, acting, yes. What? What is the effect that performances, that speakers, preachers, entertainment have on, on the public mind, and that it would be used in a very positive way, entertainment. I think that was the thing that encouraged me. Oh, yes, sir. How long did it take you to make that? That was a six, six weeks to film that picture. Back in <laughs> That's who I was. Who was you? <laughs> hey. Who's got a video on? This man right here. It's curvy. 